Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back once again to talk about Superman and Lois after another week-ish long break. I always hate when they do this. I feel like it's always this show, especially last year. Last year was definitely worse, but still even this year, even just like one week off from the show is kind of annoying, especially considering the fact that it feels like this show has been on forever, but we're only halfway through the season, which is both a good thing and a bad thing because it feels like you know, a lot has happened already. So, like, what's going to happen in the rest of the season? That's obviously something super exciting to see. But also, like, again, it feels like there's been a lot going on that what can they do next? But anyway, before we dive into this, I do want to give a quick spoiler warning. If you've not seen the episodes, so definitely make sure to go check it out. And without further ado, let's jump into this and talk about Superman and Lois Season 2, Episode 8. So the episode begins with a flashback to Natalie on her Earth and basically shows the process of her going from her Earth to Earth Prime, where she is now with our characters of Superman and Lois. And so we see that after her father, John Henry, goes up to fight the evil black-suited Superman of that Earth, she then goes after him. And then we get this red wave of energy that then sucks both her and her father into Earth Prime, basically, and we know that that red energy, or at least we assume that it is the antimatter from Crisis, Crisis on Infinite Earths, that the anti-monitor was using and all that stuff, so that looks like we're getting some Crisis connections here, which is pretty cool, because so far, Superman and Lois has been pretty separate from the Arrowverse, which isn't a bad thing, because it's a great show and it doesn't need that. Uh, but it is always still cool to see some nice, uh, a little bit of connectivity here uh, like this. So that was pretty cool. And then we get the whole journey of her, you know, coming to this earth and everything. And then we catch up with her and her father in present day, who we haven't had in the last couple episodes here. Because, of course, with John Henry's energy, not energy, injuries, uh, life-threatening injuries... And we see that that's taken quite a toll on him because when we first meet up with him in this episode, he's having a bit of memory loss because when he sees Lois, he thinks that she is his wife and he gets confused. And so we're seeing little hints and little bits of him with memory loss here and just gets you thinking like if he mistook Lois for being his wife, just imagine if sometime he mistakes Clark for being that evil Superman that killed his wife. Like... Just imagine what would happen then. That's going to be pretty, um, I mean, it'd be pretty cool to see the two of them fight, but also obviously not good. Now, another big thing we have going on in this episode is with our villains. We have Anderson meeting up with Allie, and he ascends. We actually catch up with him first in the Bizarro world, or the inverse as they call it. And so he's talking to the alley of the inverse, and then he's kind of communicating between that alley and the actual real world Earth Prime alley, and kind of just sending message back and forth. And basically the whole goal here, at least Allie's plan, is that they need to merge with their shadow selves. So that's the plan they kind of throw into motion here in this episode, when Allie takes Anderson and the other basically cultists, uh, including Chrissy, who actually tags along as well because she's like, oh, I'll give you the story of a lifetime. So they go to the mines and they're all in hazmat suits. And somehow uh, they use the power of the two pendants, the one that Ali, of course, already had. And now the one that Anderson uh, stole from Bizarro and now has given to Allie. So this opens up a portal. This opens up a big portal to the inverse. And like I said, they're trying to ascend here. So basically what happens is they all start getting sucked into this portal. But a lot of them, it almost looks like they're disintegrating. I don't know if they actually died or if that was just like the process and the effect of them going through the portal. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Uh, but then Superman shows up and he's only able to save three of them. He's only able to save Chrissy Allie and some random guy. Anderson steals the pendant and goes through the portal. And he seemed fine, especially because he just took some more ex kryptonite. So we'll see what happens there, whether maybe he becomes the true big bad of this season. Uh, because now Allie is in, in custody. She's in custody um, of the DOD. So she gets interrogated by Sam Lane, who is now kind of the acting director of the DOD. Uh, taking Anderson's place, at least temporarily for now. And she just like completely plays with him with the fact that um, she kind of teases him with like, oh, 
your daughter Lucy was in there and, you know, she didn't come out or anything. So he gets pretty mad. He gets aggressive there. So, of course, it brings up the question of, is Lucy dead? And that's what they're trying to make you think. You know, I was I was watching the episode. And I was like, yeah, I, I know she's not dead because there's no way they would kill off that character without actually showing it. Um, so I, I didn't at all think that she was actually dead. But still, cool that we got that going on there. But as that's going on, of course, Superman just saved everybody from the mines, or at least the three people from the mines. And apparently he was supposed to go pick up Natalie and John Henry from the hospital. He was going to get them a ride back to the farm. But because he was saving the people from the mines, he wasn't able to. So they just hitch a ride with some random guy, I think they said, and make their way back to the Kent farm. So Natalie is super mad at him, super angry. And, of course, is you know, going back to your old ways of, like, you know, you, for all I know, you're just, like, the one from the, from my earth and all that stuff. So she gets pretty mad. But we do kind of get a resolution towards the episode, or at least um, a start to repairing her relationship with Clark uh, by the fact that he actually gives her the keys to a new place that she and her father can stay in. It, it looks like a repair shop, and she's, like, looking around. And we know that she's into, like, repairing and stuff like that and mechanics and everything. So since her father's out of commission, I would not at all be surprised if she starts working on a new suit and she becomes the new Steel like she did in the comics. But then also in this episode, we, of course, have the whole Jonathan Jordan x Kryptonite storyline going on here because Jordan actually finds out that Candace is the one that was the x Kryptonite supplier. He's the one, or she's the one, that Jonathan was protecting in not telling his parents the full, complete truth. But actually, Jordan doesn't even get mad about it. He's fully understanding of, like, you know, he's, you know, my brother, he's in love with this girl, so it's understandable and also circumstances and everything with like you know her father's broke and she's just doing it for the money and everything so things are honestly going fairly good there you know jo jonathan he's got a new job at the convenience store and he's walking candace home and they kind of kind of confess their love for each other and they kiss and everything and it's great and all that stuff until this druggie shows up and is after candace for her money and uh, i'm assuming that he's like the one that was supplying her with the ex kryptonite so he wants his money and he's super mad at her uh and he actually takes ex kryptonite and attacks john because of course john he tries to defend her he stands up for her and so he gets attacked by this druggie and then jordan off in the distance hears this he comes in saves the day he's got his hood up and everything so he's kind of in full vigilante mode uh kind of the start to his Superboy career, which is pretty cool to see the beginnings of that side of the character. And because of this, because he did this, he misses his meeting with Sarah and Aubrey, which already obviously he wasn't looking forward to because it's his girlfriend and the girl that kissed his girlfriend. So, you know, awkward, but he misses out on that because he saved his brother. But, you know, he did the right thing. Uh, but the end of the episode is really interesting though because again we were all asking the question of is lucy dead did she die in the mines or did she get sucked into the inverse well no because she shows up at the kent farm here and you know she's all good now she's acting like she's all good and everything until at the very end of the episode sam takes her home she drugs him and steals the dod badge for Allie, most likely to go break her out and save her so, yeah, j just when you think things are good with her and Lucy's like, oh, I'm part of the family again and I'm free of Allie and all that stuff, nah, mm-mm, she's still under the control of Allie and it's really disappointing. I really hope that she does get redeemed by the end of the season because, you know, I, I, want, I just want to see a nice, happy family and everything, but I guess we'll have to wait and see if that actually ends up happening because for now, it's not looking too good, but... Anyways, guys, that was Superman and Lois Season 2, Episode 8. You can let me know your thoughts on the episode down in the comments below. What do you think about it? All your thoughts, theories, and predictions for next week's episode. And thank you so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video. And hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on everything that goes on in the DC life.